You? Is anybody? There's Molly, folks. That means your friends, the Goldbergs, are here. Brought to you by Does, the new kind of soap for everything in your wash. First, let's drop in on the Dozem family. What do you know, Daisy Dozem's written a play for her home economics club. And Ma Dozem has promised that young Dickie will play the leading part. Dickie's complaining. Ma, I can't wear this silly costume in Daisy's play. Why not? You represent the spirit of wash day progress. Imagine standing in front of all those girls spouting, Can't you see? I am Duz, D-U-Z. I'm the soap that's new. I do everything for you. That's drippy, Ma. No, it isn't, Dickie. That's just Daisy's poetical way of saying does is a new kind of soap and it does everything for work shirts, towels, to rayon slips. But, Ma, Daisy says I gotta wave this work shirt oh, yeah? and recite, does gets work shirts clean as a breeze. There's no hard scrubbing, does does it with ease. Oh, it's cute. And it's true. I don't even need a bar soap anymore because does gets the grimiest work shirts clean all by itself. But, Ma, Daisy says I should wear a towel around my head, then point to it and say, Look how wondrous white tis done by does. Now, dears, Daisy simply means does is famous for whiteness, and she's right. I've never seen whiter washes. But, Ma, Daisy wants me to wear one of her pink rayon slips. Great gleep. Oh, now, Dickie, that's only to show how safe does is for the colors you wash. You know, colors stay bright longer with does. Well, I'm not putting on any pink slip even for does. I'm wearing pants in this family and in the play, too. Well, Dickie does is a real he-man soap on wash day. Yes, ladies, compared to other leading granulated wash day soaps, does gives longer life to colors, plus unsurpassed whiteness and real cleaning power for the tough dirt. Does does everything in your wash. And now, the Goldbergs. Molly is one of those human beings whose whole life depends on the respect of her neighbors. Well, right now, no one can say what Molly's friends in Lastonbury think because it all hangs on how they react to the story of Grace and her husband, George. Of course, when Molly decided to try to reform the two, that was a noble thing, but Molly didn't tell the town that Grace was not her daughter-in-law, as she had pretended to be. Nor did she tell them that Grace and George were petty thieves. In fact, Molly unintentionally helped in the fraud by making Grace and George responsible for the money collected from the townspeople for the Delinquent Children's Fund. Grace repaid this trust by running off. George is with her. Neither of them has been heard from. And the whole town's talking. Listen. Seymour. Rosie, control yourself, please. Your mother will get out of it some way. After all, the people in this town are her neighbors and friends. She'll just explain everything to them. She'll just tell them she was trying to help two people that she thought there was some hope for. But all the money that Grace and George got away with, how will she explain that? Don't forget, Seymour, everybody thought that Grace was Sammy's wife. I know, but... If even... your sister Bertie hadn't only spilled... Rosie, let me help you cross the bridge when you get to We're it. We're on the bridge right now. But it's not burning. Rosie, the telephone! Seymour, will you answer it, please? Control yourself, Rosie, please. Just a minute, Ma! Hello? Hello? It's your father. What? Hello? Here, Rosie. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Goldberg. Hello, Pa. Where is Ma? Upstairs. Then listen to me. Anything happen? Plenty. What, Pa? Rosie. Rosie, tell Mama I want her to pack an overnight bag and go to New York and stay with Mrs. Bloom until this all blows over. Does everybody know about everything? Everything. And, and do they blame Mama? Don't ask too many questions. Just see to it that Mama does as I request. I'll be right home. Look up a timetable and see what train Mama can take. Not from our station, but from a few stations below. All right, Pa. They, they know that the money's gone. Who is it? Goodbye. Mr. Goldberg. Goodbye, Pa. I'm coming down, Rose. Seymour, dear. Yes, Rosie. Go inside. I, I want to speak to my mother. You want me to leave? No, j just go inside in the front room for a minute. All right, Rosie. What is Papa want? Where you going, Simo? He's going in the front room for a minute, Ma. Yeah, but just a minute. Give me the phone. You hung, Rosalie? Yes. Didn't Papa want to talk to me? He's coming home, Ma. How is everything? 
Did, did Papa go to see Mrs. Decker and Mrs. Vermilion? Did Papa explain everything? Did he say that Ma, it's... Uh, yeah? Ma, Papa wants you to... I'll go with you, Ma. Go where? Just take a little bag. A bag? You won't have to take much with you. Why, where, where am I going? Uh, arrested, I am, Ruth? <laughs> no, Mama, darling. Papa wants you to go to Mrs. Bloom's until the excitement of this whole thing is over. Let me sit down a minute. Now, gently and quietly. Let me hear it again. I should what? Papa wants me to what? Just go to New York for a few days. A few days? Huh? Just until I should run away. Did Mama ever run away from anything? I didn't live all these years, Rosalie, to run away and escape when life is not sweet music. No, my kind. Not your mama. Whatever comes, will. Not only will I not go away, I'll not even turn an eyelash. Those that can take the results of their deeds should not walk on the face of the earth. If I was as weak as a fly, I'd have the strength of a lion to face whatever befalls me. And if Papa calls, tell him not to fear. That's why you send Seymour in the front room? Yes. <laughs> Save your tears, Rosie, <laughs> for when they're necessary. Are you ashamed of your mum? No, Ma. All my neighbors here around are friends, Rosalie. <laughs> Whomsoever I'll tell everything will understand. Who hasn't got a heart? Oh. No. Rosalind, please. What was my crime? What? I thought it was possible to make two people good that was bad. Mrs. Goldberg, excuse me, but I, I just overheard what you said. Yes? After the age of seven, there's very little you can do with a human being. That was in a book? Yeah, I don't remember what book, but it After said... After seven? <laughs> After seven little years, then uh, all is hopeless or hopeful? Oh, you see, Ma, what a world of angels we would have if everybody stayed as they were at seven. Where are you going, Ma? Upstairs. When Papa calls, tell me. Well, what are you doing upstairs, Ma? I'm showing her my machine. My poor mother. <laughs> She doesn't realize what trouble she's in. How serious. Rosie, I can't stand it listening to you cry, dear. You called me dear before. Did you know it? Or was it just the kind of dear you would have said to anybody? Seymour, you are dear to me. Very dear. That's all I had to hear, Rosie, to sustain me through life's perilous voyage. Thank you, Rosie. Dear... Allow me. If it's my father, I'll talk to him. Hello? Hello? I want to speak to Mrs. Goldberg. Oh, just a minute. It's someone for your mother. Well, ask who it is and what's wanted. Hello? Hello. Um, well, uh, what is the nature of what your business? What do you mean, what is the nature of my business? I want to speak to Mrs. Goldberg. I have a few choice things to say to her and nobody else. It's for your mother. This woman is wild. Tell her that my mother isn't in. Oh. Um... Hello? Well, Mrs. Goldberg just stepped out. Well, she'd better step in very soon. I'll call back. Oh, what did she say, Seymour? There seems to be a very angry sense of public opinion. Against my mother, huh? Mother? Oh, a wrong number, Ma. Wrong number? Oh. Let, let me, let Ma, me, I got it. I now. have it, Ma. Hello? Uh, did Mrs. Goldberg step in yet? Hello, how are you? Who? What difference does it make how I am? I want to speak to Mrs. Goldberg. Well, uh, you take two eggs. What are you talking about? Uh, about two and a half cups of flour. Hello. Are you Mrs. Goldberg's daughter? Yes, a little vanilla. My vanilla cookies, you're giving a recipe. This township has been robbed and we want an account. And a pinch of salt. You didn't say separate the whites from the yolks. You know people have been tarred and feathered. And then you get a mixing bowl. You're telling and wrong. Misusing government funds. And 
Oh, and you bake it for oh, the... Give me. Ma, please. Give me your saying Ma, wrong. You please. didn't said sugar. Give Ma, me. I know. Give me. You didn't Ma. said sugar. Mine cookies, I got to give exact. Ma. Hello? Hello. Ma. This is Mrs. Goldberg. Oh, so you finally stepped in. I would suggest... I don't. If you want to make a big mess... I just want th to. Th then make a clean sweep of what was said before. Oh, it's too late for that. Uh, oh, no, Hello. no. Hello. Um, now, you listen to me. What's that? This is no time for nonsense. You may not realize what hot water you're in. What's that? Who is this? This is Mrs. Familiar. I foolishly gave you $200 for the fund for delinquent children. Yes? What do you mean, yes? You encouraged two cheap thieves. You permitted them to take advantage of us. You let them collect money under false pretenses. Yes. Well, uh, what can I do for you? You can be present at a meeting we are having. Yes. Huh? Hello. Who is on the phone? Hello. Yes. Hello. Well, did you hear me? N no, what? A meeting is being called. Who is it? And everyone expects you to be present with the money and also to explain your conduct. Goodbye. Goodbye. Molly, who was it? A wrong number, Jake. A wrong number. It's getting to be obvious that what Rosie feared is going to occur. The town resents the way Molly handled the situation more than they worry about the loss of the money. It's Molly's position in town, the faith people have in her, which is in jeopardy. You know, friends, a few days ago, a Mrs. Williams in Chicago helped a soldier in New Guinea wipe out a squad of charging Japs. A Mrs. Johnson in El Paso, Texas, helped an anti-aircraft battery shoot down a Nazi Messerschmitt. A Mrs. Jones in Macon, Georgia, helped an American Navy pilot down a Jap Zero. You know how these ladies did it? simply by turning in one pound of waste fat to their butcher. Now, that's true. One pound of waste fat will fire 150 light machine gun bullets. One pound of fat fires one shell from an anti-aircraft gun and shoots 10 50 caliber bullets from an airplane's machine gun. Are you turning in waste fat regularly? Are you saving every bit, even solid trimmings from meats and poultry? You can melt down these pieces of fat in your oven whenever it's in use. Then pour all waste fat into a clean container and bring it to your butcher. Now don't throw any waste fat out. Turn it in. Keep our guns firing. Be sure to listen to the next episode of The Goldbergs, written for you by Gertrude Berg. Molly tries to be Joan of Arc, while Jake wants her to be just Molly Goldberg. This is Clayton Collier speaking and reminding you to do as the dozens do. Let does, the new kind of soap, do everything in your wash.